Hi Thinkers, welcome to the Object Oriented Design course on ThinkX Academy. In this video, we are going to cover the last principle of the solid principle, which is the dependency inversion principle. This principle is very important and you will see this principle, the use cases of this principle in a lot of design patterns that we will uncover in this course. So first of all, we are going to study five key important points of the dependency inversion principle. So these five key concepts are loose coupling, dependency injection, testing, then abstraction, open close principle, right? So we have already studied some of these in the previous uh, principles. In this video, we are going to just make sure how these principles help us implement dependency inversion principle. So that's one thing. The second thing is we will also see how this principle actually helps us in avoiding a lot of design flaws. And there are a lot of examples on the internet which shows uh, this, how does this dependency inversion principle works. But I have created my own example and I think that this will be a very funny example. And this will help you understand all of these five key important points, right? So let's just jump into the problem and let's see how this principle solves that. So the problem is very simple. Let's consider first we need to think of a situation where someone is dependent or something, right? So let's say we have two objects, object one and object two. We just need to think of a real world situation where one object is dependent on another. One of the key important uh, situation which we have seen is a parent and child situation. So a child is dependent on parent for various things, right? So let's consider a very simple thing, money, right? So child depends on the parent for money. So child will always need uh, the parent for getting the money. So th there is a strong dependency, right? So if a child wants to work, it needs a dependency parent, right? Let's consider some more situations, car engine problem. So let's say we have a car, a car requires an engine to work. Without engine, the car is not going to work. So car is dependent on en engine. So car has a dependency on engine, right? So that's the part of dependency, right? Inversion principle will study that. So first we need to understand what is a dependency, right? So let's take this parent child problem and we can apply it in different types of scenarios. And we are just going to generalize this problem. And then there is a task for you guys. You will have to make sure that you apply this concept to your own example, right? And you will be able to understand this concept much more beautifully, right? So let's start with the parent one. So here you can see I've drawn a dotted line. You just have to consider the program in this part of this dotted line, right? So here you can see I've created a class child and here I, I'm saying that it is a higher level module. Now, when we have two objects and they depend on each other, we are just first considering a situation where child is dependent on parent. So since child is dependent on parent, parent is the dependency. So parent is a lower level module and child is the higher level module. Similarly, if we have the car engine problem, engine is a low level module because engine is the dependency for car. So car is a higher level module, right? So here you can see I've created a class parent, which is a low level module. Now here you can see, uh, I want this child to be able to get money from parent. So here you can see I've created two boxes in the parent class, the green box and the red box. So green box has a simple function, get money function. This child class needs to access this get money function in order to get money from the parent. So a simplest way, right? Let's say there is a software developer intern and he comes up with the idea that, you know what I'm going to do is first I will create a child, uh, an object of the child class ch equals to new child. And now I want to access this get money function using the ch uh, class, right? So sorry, the ch object. How am I going to do that? He said that, okay, we will create a constructor of the child class. So you can see here, we have the constructor of the child class. And he says that, okay, inside of this constructor, I'm going to create an object of the parent class. Now, what I will do is there is a reference to the parent class. So you can see parent, parent equals to new parent. So now I have an object of parent class within this child class. So it means that the child class has uh, the dependency and the developer says that this is the way I'm going to fulfill this dependency requirement of the child class. Similarly, if let's say the child is actually car and we have engine here, we can write engine engine, this dot engine equals to new engine. Right. So in this way, this programmer, this intern says that I'm going to solve this problem using this approach. Right. So now what I can do is I can use the CH object and I can use this parent object to call this get money function. So there are some key problems with this sign, uh, this kind of approach. And we will see how these problems can be solved by using dependency inversion principle. Right. So the first key uh, important problem is abstraction. Now you can see I've created a red section here. This parent class will not only have one implementation or only one thing which is dependent on child. It will have a red section in red section it will have some behavior that is restricted to the parent class and parent does not want to share these behavior with the child class but you can see that in this type of implementation the parent object is here so the child class has the ability to actually access this red section also because we are using the whole object we are passing the whole object to this child class this is big, a big problem a security flaw also as a standpoint of security also you can see that if this is a restricted section i am giving this class the ability to have a look inside of all the behaviors of the parent class, right? So we need to implement abstraction to make sure that this child class has knowledge 
of only the green section and not the red section, right? How are we going to do that? We will see that, but let's study some more things, right? The second problem is the open close principle, right? What is the problem? The problem is, let's say this child class is dependent on more than one dependency, right? Instead of parent, let's say that the child is also dependent on teacher to get some education or something else, right? So then I will have to modify this class and write this dot teacher equals to new teacher, right? Similarly, if we have the car engine problem, uh, we have engine as a dependency. There are some more dependencies and I will have to modify the class and create objects here inside of the constructor. And this is a violation of the open close principle, which says that once you have created a class, it should be closed for modification. So if we are modifying that again and again, it is a violation of the open close principle. That's one more problem. Let's take a look at the third problem, which is testing. Right. So if I want to test this child class, I will first have to provide it the parent class and all the dependencies. I will have to uh, if let's say I'm checking this child class, I'm testing. I'm a tester, software tester, and I'm given this object CH. Right. And I want to test it. It will become very difficult for me to test it because there are so many dependencies and I don't know how these dependencies are working. So manually, I will have to go to each of the classes, each of the dependencies to understand where the program is not working well. So that's one major problem, right? How to solve this problem? Let's come to that point. How can we solve these problems? So the dependency inversion principle says that if a higher level module, right? Focus on the lines I'm going to say. If we have a higher level module, which you can see is child or let's say a car. If a higher level module depends on the concrete implementation of the lower level modules, concrete classes are basically those classes which specify the whole implementations. So you can see that, yeah, how our uh, high level module is dependent on the concrete implementation of parent and that's the main reason why this child class this high level module has access to this red section also so the dependency inversion principle says that okay if you want to resolve this problem of this child class being able to access this red section what you can just do is just remove this green section the section which is the dependency itself so money is the dependency in our case so what we can do is we can move this dependency money from the parent class to an interface right so what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, make sure that the dependencies are moved to abstractions. So the dependency inversion principle in simple words says that if the high level module is dependent on the low level module implementation, they should uh, that should not happen. They both the high level and low module should both depend on the abstraction, which is the interface. Right. So let's see how this interface will solve the problem. Right. So here you can see that I've moved this get money function to an interface, which I'm calling as a dependency. Right. Uh, to make this example more intuitive, we can also say that let's say this dependency is actually a bank. So what the parent says, parent says that, okay, I'm going to move my money to the bank. And if the child wants money, it will not ask me the money. Uh, if it asks me the money, I can just redirect him towards the bank that you can go to the bank and get the money. So this interface dependency defines this uh, get money function. And now what this parent class will do is, now we are actually moving towards this uh, dependency inversion principle. So what I'm going to do is, this parent class is now going to implement this interface dependency. So we know that we can do that by just writing class parent implements dependency let's say the dependency is bank since this parent is uh, is implementing this interface this abstraction it will provide the whole implementation of get money function here by using at the override keyword right so the class parent is going to override this get money function from the interface and will provide the implementation in the green section here now we have made sure that this low level module is dependent on the abstraction. That's the dependency inversion principle that both of these, the high level and low module and low level module, both of them should depend on the abstractions, which is the interfaces or abstract classes. So for the first case, I have done that very simply by creating an interface dependency and I've defined the function which was there in the green section. And now this class is instead of writing the whole function, it is now overriding the function from this interface. All right, so let's move on to the modifications that we need to make to the child class in order to make the child class dependent on the interface. So here you can see in the in this box, I've written parent parent equals to new parent. OK, so I'm creating an object of this parent class. Now, remember that this parent uh, object can access the red section, green section. Can it access the green section? No, because it is overriding from the interface. Right. So let's say I pass this whole object to the child class, to the constructor of the child class. So here you can see child ch equals to new child parent right so you can see it is different from this case here we were not passing anything so what we are doing here is another important concept which is dependency injection so what we are doing is at the time of creating object which is to the constructor we are going to pass the dependencies so you can see that parent is the dependency right since this parent is the dependency i am injecting this dependency here right we will come to why we are doing that we'll come to that point also but this is known as dependency injection so this child class we are injecting dependency parent here 
in the car engine problem we will create car car equals to new car and instead of parent we will pass engine right so let's take a look at the main thing the main and the most important concept which lies in these four lines right so we have created a class child now instead of creating uh, the reference of the parent class we are creating a reference to the interface remember we cannot create a, an instance or the object of interface so we can only create the inter, uh, the uh, object of this parent class which is the dependency and we can inject it to the child class right the one which needs the dependency requirement now to this constructor you can see i'm saying dependency dep right which is the reference right now this is similar to you can see we have parent here we are passing parent here so this line will actually represent child then dependency dep is equals to new parent right so instead of this i can just write a very simple line here that this actually means if i try to expand this line it means that the dependency dep which is the reference to this interface is now actually we have passed parent here so it will be equal to new parent right so indeed we are passing the parent object but we are passing it with the help of interface right so you can see that now this low level module uh, sorry this high level module which is the class is not directly accessing the parent the or uh, the uh, green section directly right it is actually accessing this green section via this interface so you can see that it first goes to the interface and now if i want to access the get money function i will just write dep not get money and in this way i can access this function right so this module is now not using directly the whole object it is uh, we are passing the whole object to the whole dependency to this child class but it is actually referencing the interface right so this level module high level module is now accessing the green section from the interface right so via this interface it is doing that so this is indeed a very important line and here you can see how we are doing this right so now we have fulfilled the requirements of the dependency inversion principle which says that both the low level and high level modules which mean that if a class is dependent on other so the dependency and the dependent right which is this high level and low, low, low level module they should both depend on abstraction and we have abstraction here which is this interface right so this class and this class both depend on interface this depends on interface because it is implementing the interface and this depends on interface because it is accessing the uh, only the methods by using this interface which is dependency dep right it's an important concept if i try to draw a diagram you can see that here we have the interface and we have two classes which is the parent and the child so let's say we have a car and engine problem so car and engine both are accessing this interface right so you can see the parent is accessing the interface using implements keyword and the child is accessing the green section using this dependency reference right so how we have solved the open close principle that's a key important point and second key important point is how we have solved the abstraction problem right now you can see that if i use this dep reference i cannot access this red section so this red section is hidden from me because in this interface i have only implemented the green section which is the functions which are required for the dependency now i have solved the problem of abstraction here by making sure that they do not directly depend on each other they are depending on a third party right so you can also see that way also now let's talk about the open close close principle so we came up with the problem that what will happen if the child class or the high level module depends on more than one thing now what we can do is if it depends on more than one thing we can just make sure that uh, those dependencies just directly implements this bank or the dependency interface so let's say this engine there is some more modules they can just simply implement this interface and i can use the reference of this dependency and access those functions as well right so without even modifying this class without even modifying the class child by just adding the functions in the dependency i can create numerous dependencies which can implement this interface using the same way this parent class was implementing the dependency which was the bank so this is a key important point there were some very important points here now how will this help in uh, testing so when i want to test the child class right i can create a mock of this parent mock means it actually is not the parent it is mocking the parent behavior right so it is just like a copy of parent so what i can do is i can just create a mock of this parent and i can pass it to be able to test this so i exactly know here that this child object depends on the parent dependency right so i can just provide it the dependency and i will be able to check and do the testing work easily right so these are the key important points of the dependency inversion principle and basically that's all for this video in the next video onwards we are going to start with the creational patterns which is the 23 gang of four patterns and we will start with our first pattern in the next video so we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching